time to talk about single balloon kyphoplasty. Kyphoplasty is a minimum invasive technique for the vertebral augmentation of compression flange. It is more advanced as compared to vertebral plastic with the following advantages. Less chances of cement leakage and the ability to correct some amount of the quantity. The main indication being compression fracture. It has a failure of conservative treatment or it is very painful. In cases of instrumentation associated adjacent segmental vertebral fracture or in cases of compression fracture associated with plasma cytoma, painful hemangiomas or osteolytic metastasis. The absolute contraindications being coagulation disorder, infection at the entry site, bus fractures which involve the posterior wall or involve the spiny canal, vertebral plana not opening up on prone lateral view. The relative contraindications may severely collapsed vertebra, fractured pedicles, tumor invasion into the spinal canal, or more than three levels of involvement. The instrument kit, which consists of the machine needle with a stillet, the guide wire, working channel, VEMA, balloon, pressure sensors, and the cement injector. This is how a double balloon typhoplasty looks like. It's transpedicular. To overcome the shortcomings of a conventional two balloon typhoplasty, which mainly involves the cost and the time, single balloon typhoplasty has been used. It was found to be equally efficient as double balloon typhoplasty biomechanically. The plan is to insert a balloon catheter in the center of the vertebral body with the extra particular approach. However, the problem is it is not a well standardized procedure. The trajectory from the skin entry, which is the point A here, to the center of the vertebral body appears variable according to the level involved and its radiological anatomy. Let's take this case. Four weeks after a vertebral compression fracture, repeated X ray shows. There's increase in the compression fracture P12 with minimal opening on flexion and extension view. Hence, it was advised to undergo kyphoplasty. Single balloon kyphoplasty was planned. I do it under general anesthesia. Patient is placed prone on a horizontal bolster. The lordotic position aid in the ligament or taxic deconstruction of the vertebra. See how it has opened up. Whenever you do this procedure, see that you have an access to a good CM and an expert CM technician. CM and the patient is adjusted so that it's squaring of the vertebra. What do you mean by squaring? That is in the AP view, the spine is processed in the, in the center. The pedicles are in the upper one third of the body. And there is the entrance are parallel. And in the lateral view, again, the entrance should be parallel. And there is superimposition of the pedicles. This is a very important slide. The surface marking on the patient. So you draw the line C, which is a line along the lateral border of the affected vertebra on the opposite side. Line B, which is on the lateral border of the pedicle on the instrumental side of the affected vertebra. And the line A, which is two and a half times the distance between B and C. Why this two and a half times? This study, Korean study shows that at each of the level, the rough estimate is around 2.5 times the distance. So the line A is drawn parallel to line B. Point C is on the inferior border of the affected vertebra. Point B is in the upper border of the affected vertebra on the ipsilateral side. When you extend the line from C to B and where it joins the line A is the entry point. So, it, so make a stab wound at the point A. The junction needle is angled at 45 to 50 degrees. It is advanced to the point B, which is the outer border of the base of the ipsilateral pedicle on the lateral view and in the AP view. 
This needle will pass through the ligamentous complex of the prostovertebral joint in the thoracic spine or the transverse process in the lumbar spine. After penetrating the cortex of the vertebral body, minor adjustments of the tip is made so that in the AP view, the tip points to the lower and inferior border of the vertebra, which is affected, and in the lateral view, points to the anterior inferior aspect of the affected vertebra. Before we advance the needle, see that the tip of the needle in the AP view is in the ring of the pedicle before it passes through the posterior cortex of the vertebra. This is to ensure that you do not damage the spinal canal. Once the tip of the needle passes the posterior wall, the slit is removed. The guide wire is placed in the center of the vertebral body, in the AP and the lateral view. The junction needle is removed. Over this needle, the working channel is passed, which just penetrates the posterior cortex. Through the working channel, the reamer is passed so as to smoothen the edges of the bone, so as to prevent a bursting of the balloon, the kyphoplasty balloon. Remove the reamer and pass the kyphoplasty balloon. The kyphoplasty balloon is expanded with an omnipack solution. How much to expand? Will you restore the vertebral height? Or you have reached the maximum volume which the balloon can take? Or the maximum pressure has been achieved? Or you are flush against the cortical bone? See that you do not damage the posterior wall or the end plates. You require about 150 PSI in an acute fracture and around 300 PSI in a old chronic fracture. Once the balloon is inflated and in good position, start mixing, start mixing the cement. Once the cement is about uh, three to five minutes, that is, it is becoming uh, toothpaste-like, remove the balloon and this leaves a void. And in this void, you fill up the cement with the cement injector. You fill up till you reach the posterior one third of the body. But do not remove the injector or the working cannula because there can be leakage to that side. Leave it for 15 to 20 minutes till the cement hardens. Go on rotating the particular. Uh, injector and the cannula so that do not set into the vertebral cement. Once the cement is set by 15 to 20 minutes, you can remove the working channel, and this is how the picture will look like. We added percute screws because there was problem of the post tension band on the MRI. This was how the pre op look, and this is of the post op. See the restoration of the height. The complications related to this technique are malposition of the cannula can lead to the vessel and nerve damage. There can be end plate fractures or lateral wall fractures during inflation of the balloon. There may be recollapse after the balloon has been deflated. Or if you are not careful, there may be local cement leakages in the cortical bone, epidural, or in the anterior venous system. The non technical problem being transient hyperalgesia is known to occur because of. Uh, exothermic reaction of the cement. If the monomer leaks, there may be cardiorespiratory effects. There can be chances of infection or there can be adjacent level fractures. Thank you.